Hello, I'm Wendy from Stone Flow Designs and in this video I want to show you how um, these beautiful ocean art pieces were made. Uh, this is technically I guess a mixed media art. It has uh, acrylic ink and a little bit of alcohol ink poured over photo paper, the back side of photo paper, uh, two coats of resin, what looks like plaster but is actually more of a cement material uh, to form the land bits um, and a few waves as well as a few accents of 24 karat gold here and there and a few other places randomly. Um, I have put these boards or this um, art on wooden boards so as you can see the back side this is just planks of wood but I've covered the edges with the stone as well so um, they look quite nice on a dark wall um, as you'll see in the video there's some photos um, of, of the three of them on display on a beautiful dark wall and it looks quite spectacular. Uh, before I get stuck into the video of how to and showing you exactly how these were made, I just want to run through a few of the supplies that I used. Um, of course, as I mentioned, I used uh, acrylic ink um, and a tiny little bit of alcohol ink. The main components were acrylic ink, but the difference is they were actually mixed with 30% alcohol and 70% water. Um, the adding the alcohol ink in creates a little bit of a reaction, um, which really helps to create some of the darker bits that you see there. But I will, of course, mention all the materials that I use in the comments, so don't fret if you can't um, figure out what it is that I'm holding in my hand. Um, so I, I was using isopropyl alcohol, uh, and like I said, with the acrylic ink, it was mixed with 70% water, 30% alcohol. Uh, the main thing I think for in, any of you looking at this going, yep, I get that, that's um, ink and resin, yep, is this, this. Um, this is not plaster, this is not spackle like most people are using. Um, what it's actually called is a product called Mortifil. This is fabulous. If you haven't heard of it yet, it is amazing. It is a resin based mortar. So it's basically a product meant to fill gaps in bricks and cement and stone. Um, but what it does is it sticks beautifully to resin without a problem. In fact, the only thing that I've found so far that it doesn't actually stick to is a, a silicon mat. So thankfully, um, that was used as the base, but it, um, it it pours out nicely on the the surface. You can spread it just like you would spackle. It dries as hard as stone, and you can sand it really easily. It comes in many different colors. This particular one, of course, that I used was just white. Um, it is it really is a beautiful product um it is made in australia i don't know if it is available outside of australia um but i would highly recommend looking it up uh it does come in tubes it's not that cheap but at the same time you're really not using too much of it uh, i did find when it came to using it, I um, did cut the lid or the tip of the, the nozzle off the first time I used it. And then the next time and every other sub subsequent time, I've simply used this nozzle as a stopper and the product does not dry out. So you can um, open it up by taking the nozzle off, pour some in a cup, use it, put the nozzle back on. The next time you go to use it, even if it's a week later, it's still perfectly fine. So um, I'd recommend doing that if you were looking at using the Mortifil and worried that you're spending $20 for a tube and you're only going to be using a quarter of it and possibly throwing the rest out. You won't. Um, 
Um, another thing that I did find that I perhaps would like to mention is in the video you'll see I, I did add a lot of 24 karat gold. I kind of got carried away. Um, less is more when it comes to gold. So in the end, I ended up going back over it in places and covering up a lot of the gold because I just found it was just too much. But having the few tiny little accent pieces here and there, I, I think really just help it shine. Um, having too much is, well, like I said, too much. I did decide to go over the edges with the Mortarfill stone. Um, I think I'll probably sand them a little bit just to take the roughness off of them. But like I said, they do sand really easily. Um, and then you're not seeing the board, but the board is simply a long board that I bought from Bunnings um, and uh, I, I cut it into five pieces, five equal lengths. I only used three for this project, but I think I wasn't trying to do this particular project, but I really like how it turned out. Um, so I think without further ado, let's get started and I'll show you exactly how this all came together. Oh, one more thing, the photo paper. The paper that I used is, um, HP, I'll put it in the comments because it's HP photo paper. This is a giant roll of photo paper. It's 32 meters long and I think it cost me $110 from Officeworks. That's gonna last me a really long time. Um, with photo paper, I have tried the other papers uh, for alcohol ink art. Um, and well they're really expensive and quite frankly i like the way the photo paper works better so here's an example sheet of photo paper it has the glossy side and then it has the back make sure if you're buying photo paper especially if you're buying a roll of photo paper for a hundred dollars you want to make sure they haven't put a a watermark on the on the back that says you know fuji or something all over the back that is obviously not going to work for you um the glossy side don't use it the glossy side is actually designed to absorb ink it is for your photos to be printed on so that is the last thing that you want when it comes to using ink on paper you want it to be able to move you don't want it to sink in and and create a quick stain so if you use the back side, it works perfectly. And the best thing about the photo paper is it's not plastic as such. So you can use the heat gun a lot on photo paper and it does not warp quickly and bend and cause any problems. It actually works really well. So that is why photo paper is my absolute preference when it comes to alcohol ink and acrylic ink. Um, I do like to use the heat gun a lot, and you'll see in the video that I did use the heat gun to create some of the lines that you see that, that do mimic the ocean. So the heat gun is important when it comes to this particular kind of art. All right, so let's get started and I'll show you exactly how it was made. Thanks so much. Okay, so to start with, I'm pouring out the acrylic ink. This is the blue azure mixed with the gray. Um, and it's also mixed with 70% isopropyl alcohol and 30% water. Uh, acrylic ink really doesn't like to mix with alcohol. So that's why a 30% to 70, 30 to 70 ratio works quite well. Um, as you can see here, this is um, just, a, it's still acrylic ink. It's the darker ink. So this is blue, green shade blue. I'll put the products in the comments. Mixed with a one drop of black. It's, it's just a much more concentrated version of the acrylic ink. Um, and then lastly, I follow it with a very small amount of the alcohol ink. Um, this is, the color is Storm. Uh, it's quite a concentrated amount as well. But what you'll see in the video is that the alcohol ink does not like to mix with the acrylic ink. Um, the base of alcohol inks actually isn't alcohol at all. I 
I think it's, I could be wrong. I think it's methylated spirits. Um, but either way, it does create a reaction. And, you know, in some art pieces, you wouldn't want that. But in this, uh, I do, because it sort of mimics the, uh, almost like a reef. Uh, it, it kind of, when you see it on the canvas or on, on the photo paper as such, it, it actually builds solid forms that move with the liquid. But those solid forms create bits on the, the photo paper that, in my eyes, look a bit like a reef, which I love because the whole um, point to this is to mimic the beauty of the ocean. So as you can see here, I'm now using the heat gun um, to move and really evaporate the alcohol. But in doing so, it creates those beautiful lines on the photo paper. All right, so moving on. And now we've got the dry um, uh, art. And this is the point where I'm trying to figure out exactly what part of um, the art I want to put on the boards. I've created this little um, uh, template that I'm using to just get a visual of what it would look like. My intention wasn't really to have it all as one piece uh, split into three. I was just going to use the pieces that I liked, um, but it turned out that I really liked the whole flow. So I used the whole thing. And here you can see that I'm cutting the sheets uh, lengthwise to fit with the boards. I am leaving a very, very slight gap on the edges uh, just so that I can make sure that the glue is, is fully stuck down and that there's no risk of any of the board showing. I've got my pieces now. I am gluing them to the board. I'm using a golden glue. Uh, I'll put that in the comments. It worked really well. Unfortunately, I don't have any video of it, but this is the boards with the, the photo paper adhered to the board and I'm just slicing the edges off. Uh, now I have the boards with the finished glue. Um, I'm getting ready to resin them, which unfortunately I don't have any coverage of that either, but it's just a clear coat of resin that I put over top. Um, and now we're at the mortarfill. This was the fun part. I mean, the ink was fun too, but the mortarfill, I really wanted to do something, um, that was in line with the spackle art, but, um, I, I did want to do it on top of resin. So adding a spackle or a plaster onto resin, it's never going to stick. So um, looking for something that I could or some way that I could add uh, a texture that looks and feels like stone was uh, the problem that I needed to solve. And that's why I was so excited about the mortarfill because, you know, I, I really, I think I found a video of it getting uh, gluing a million different weird things together and seeing how it actually stuck to everything. And one of the pieces that they used in the video was actually a resined product. So I quickly ran out to my bunnies and bought a few tubes and yeah, I, I really, I loved using it. I loved using it because it does dry like a stone. Um, but also it dries so quickly. With the resin base, uh, if you put a relatively thin layer, you'd, it would be dry in 10 minutes. I did use quite a thick layer, um, as you can see. So I did wait uh, a full 24 hours before I tried to sand it. But within 24 hours, it was completely solid and, um, and it sanded beautifully as well. I'm using two different tools to sand. This one that you can see in the video is really useful if you are trying to create a unified flat surface. I wanted all the stone to be flat. I wanted it to be the same thickness across the three boards. Um, and so using something quite large like this really works to, to see which parts need some extra sanding. The one thing I did find though with the white mortar fill uh, I did have some sandpaper that was like a black grit 
And uh, I, well, I stopped using it in the moment I started because it, it left black bits behind, which is the last thing that I wanted. Um, so I was on the hunt for white sandpaper. Uh, this was quite satisfying, just revealing the resin and the, the ocean underneath all of the sanded grit that was left over. Um, I'm just cleaning it up, getting ready to add some gold. All right, so this is the gold bit. Uh, I, I don't have much of a video of this. I will do a full video on adding the 24 karat gold leaf. Uh, this was the first time I'd worked with gold leaf. Um, and it really wasn't that hard, to be honest. Uh, it, it was a bit daunting because, of course, 24 karat gold, uh, it's, it's not cheap. Um, but it went a long way. And quite honestly, it was, it, I think the hardest part of gold leaf is actually just figuring out when it's ready to add. So this is the resin part. And as you can see in this video, it shows the full amount of gold that I did and then ended up going back and covering it up because I, I just, I still look at it and go, mm, it's just too much. It's, it just, it, it kind of, I thought it ruined it. I, I probably went too far covering it up, but I definitely went too far adding the gold. So um, live and learn. This was the first time I'd ever created a piece like this. So I will definitely be making more. I think the next one that I do will be a black stone. Um, and I actually think the gold would look a lot better on the black stone. Um, but again, it's just a balancing act, isn't it? So as you can see, I've just sped up the video. I really, I'm, the most important thing about this piece is just trying really hard not to get the resin on the stone. There are some bits of stone that I've purposely made lower than the rest that I do want to be sunken underneath the resin. Um, but for the most part, the rest of it, I don't want any resin on. And um, once you get resin on the stone, you, you basically would have to sand it to the point of removing the stone or add more stone because it would change the look and feel. The stone is very matte. The resin is very gloss. The idea of those contrasting um, textures is really important to this piece. So I was really careful to just very gently push the resin into the crevices without over flooding it. Um, I did end up adding a few waves as well. Not very many. Uh, I really just, I loved the ink and didn't want to cover it up too much with, um, with the, the white uh, uh, resin waves. All right, so this was the last wave that I added just along the dark a bit there and that's the end of the resin. So now you can see I'm going back in with some more mortarfill. I added a little bit of spackle to the mortarfill. Might have added a little bit too much uh, but I in in the end it did create a, a smoother finish so I will try that again on, a, on a, another piece that I do using the white um, just perhaps a little bit less speckle because of course the speckle just doesn't dry as well as the mortarfill. The mortarfill dries solid without cracks no problems whatsoever Spackle, unless it's a thin layer, it's always going to crack um, and that's a bit problematic. So in the end, it worked out fine. I sanded it down, but uh, I did cover up a lot of the gold, perhaps maybe too much. All right, this is the last sand that I did. I was very careful, you can't really see it very well in the sped up video, but I was very careful not to scratch the resin that was there because I didn't want to do a third coat of resin that would put the stone at risk of being covered by resin. So I've just cleaned it all with um, isopropyl alcohol and voila.
All right, so I hope you enjoyed watching that video and seeing how these were made. I certainly enjoyed making them. I will be putting out a video a week, so if you enjoyed the video, uh, please hit the subscribe button and the notification to be notified of my next video. Uh, if you have any questions, of course, put them in the comments and um, hopefully we'll see you again. Thanks again. I'm Wendy from Stoneflow Designs.